Stargate. This is episode 155. We are talking Stargate, the franchise, and for the very first time on this podcast, in full, we are talking Stargate Atlantis. Nice. We got Yay. here, finally. Through seven more seasons. Weir. More weir. More weir. More We have not said that before, and... I dare say off that reaction. Said nobody like, ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. We have reached it. and we, Look, we teased for the longest time that uh, when we got closer, we would decide on what we were going to do. Were we going to finish off SG-1, all 10 seasons, and then the follow-up movies, and then move on to the spin-off? Or do we go in chronological and release order and do them as we saw them on screens 15, 16 years ago? And that's sort of what we've done. Well, not sort of. That's what we've done. We're going to be uh, going into Rising here, the first two episodes, of Stargate Atlantis Season 1 after we did the same for Season 8 of SG-1 last week. So starting Atlantis... And if you've uh, been listening to the show, you'll know that Reese is a first-time Stargate watcher. He's watching SG-1 for the first time each and every week on the podcast. The rest of us are long-term fans. I'm a Stargate fan. I have never seen Atlantis. Mm. I watched the first maybe three quarters (laughs) of this two-part pilot when it first released on DVD in here in Australia. Me and my brother Lincoln went and bought it. Come home, put it on, went and made some lunch. I never returned to never watch how this episode wrapped up. Was it Dr. Oh, yeah. Weir that sent you away? <laughs> <laughs> it was right in the middle of that battle at the end and I just walked off and I don't know, I just <laughs> never came back. And I've heard from you and you, that's, that's uh, Maddie, the power and of Lincoln. Sandwich. Go back and rewatch it and yeah, watch good. it. And I thought, no, no, I'm going to save it for the podcast. It takes a few episodes but because you get that, where are my team? Where is SG1? Mm. I don't like these people. Like that's what the first immediate thought is. But they yeah. start to grow on you. For me, I liked um, old mate, bloody Shepherd. I thought he was pretty cool. McKay, I liked uh, that Scottish fella. Uh, nah, too much of a dweeb for me yeah. at the moment. <laughs> and we moment, yeah. we pissed me off so much. <laughs> she was probably the biggest handbrake for me liking wow. this episode. Yeah. But it, for me, it was a, it was a good start. I think the oh. um the Irish guy that's the that actor played the young, Scottish. Oh, sorry, Scottish. Um, that actor played the young Ernest, Ernest back yeah. in um, Tormentor Tantalus, the guy that was in the oh, little film. Yeah, that went in the in, in the, the flashback. Yeah, went into that big underwater kit and mm. went through the Stargate and it turned off and he got yeah. Same actor. Wow. Well, we saw a couple of repeat actors in this episode. Mm. Obviously, that was a good one. The other one, not oh, so yeah. much. But, well, well, I will read the synopsis for the way that this opens up, and then we'll, uh, we'll really rip into it. Because, uh, yeah, I've got, a lot of, I've got a lot of questions for you guys having watched this for the first time as well, and I'm keen to see how Reese said, and the way you said about weird too, because... I, I, I listening to the way that you spoke about it last week and how much you, she pissed you off in the start of S, SG1, mm. I'm like, oh, she'll probably be better for you in SGA because she's in her own <laughs> new territory and mm, she, you'd think she's, so. she's not <laughs> stepping on other people's toes. So, yeah. all right, let's get into it. Rising, part one and two. In their constant pursuit to find the lost city of the ancients, Ooh. the Stargate Command uncovers a new galaxy of adventure, the legendary city of Atlantis. Here they encounter new technologies, new allies and a terrifying a new enemy, but as the explorers delve deeper into their discoveries, they soon realize that they lack the power needed to return home and that their journey to Atlantis may be more than just a visit. That seems like it was a bit of a like overall sell for the show rather than mm. a uh, particular synopsis for the first two. That's basically what episodes. they wrote when they sent it to MGM and said, This is what yeah. we're looking to do. Here's That's, the pitch. Yeah, here's That's the, the pitch. pitch. <laughs> yeah, we'll take both. What? Yeah. We've already. We've already had to write a whole second show. We're not writing a different synopsis. Let's yeah, just put yeah. that on the back of the DVD. Well, to keep things uh, in in the same sort of team, uh, it is obviously created and written this episode or both these episodes by Robert C. Cooper and Brad Wright mm-hmm. and directed by Martin Wood. Yeah. So I did so notice at the end the production team was uh, Cooper Wright. Mm. Oh. Not Wright Cooper. Mm. But uh, yeah, their own it's production. It's just alphabetical, that's all. Yeah. It's not important. Yeah. <laughs> it's nothing else. <laughs> or does he say, Cooper, you can have first billing on, like, you know, the stepchild, but I'll keep first billing for SG1. Yeah. Mm. Maybe it's, yeah. Mm. yeah. Did that so you didn't have to pay him as much, maybe. <laughs> so, Reese, at the end of last week's podcast, you were saying that you have really enjoyed your time with SG1 so far. I think actually, no, it was off the um, out the back of our season seven rank. You said the full mm. seven seasons, you love SG1, you love the journey so far. Season eight got off to a good start last week uh, for SG1, but now we're in uncharted territory and it's like this is almost a bit of a, a risk or a gamble as far as what we're covering because we know what we've liked. This is new stuff. So mm. 
this goes to me as well. But while I'm asking you, yeah, how do how do you feel about this being like Maddie said? It's the it's the stepchild. It's in the yeah, family, but start of something new. It's a new team. We're in a new place. New <laughs> Look, rules. All these all these memories come flooding back. Pardon the pun of yeah. having the ha- having a new series to watch and just having so much to remember and so much to learn about new characters and new just new shit happening mm. and um yeah doing my best to to remember that while still having a dependency on alcohol <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah i can't afford alcohol these days so <laughs> goon more more <laughs> more and more goon and coke, coke. Goon and coke. <laughs> Keen and cake. <laughs> uh, and just, and just like the, <laughs> the, the no brand name cola from, from um, yeah. Aldi. Yeah, mm, cheap you know red I mean? wine and pesito. <laughs> 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 no, but yeah, I really like the start of it. Obviously, the first half an hour was just explaining, you know, the, the time frame between uh, SG1 and the start of Atlantis um, and then get obviously getting into their own first episode with the wraiths and they were... That was cool, but um, yeah, I think it was yeah for the start of it. I I, I was uh, I appreciate the start or episode one of season one of Atlantis. I think it was cool too the fact that they had O'Neill and Jackson who have been there since the movie. They kicked off SG One and now they're kind of kicking off Atlantis yeah. as well, mm. kind of passing the baton. Yeah, and apparently yeah. they had to um they had to bank their Rick days. So if you'll notice uh, last week with New Order. Richard Dennison is actually absent from the whole first half, like the part one, like the first 40 minutes. He's not in it because they had to bank the Rick days. They would have used him for that, mm. kept him in stasis so that they could use him for this. Yeah. So they wanted, they used their Rick days um, for, for rising instead, mm. which I think is, yeah, it was a really clever idea. Sort of him handing the torch over to Shepard, who is basically an O'Neill clone. Mm. Like he's, you know, they kind of shuffle things around with the other characters. It's like, you know, Weir is a little bit Daniel and a little bit Hammond and then, Taylor's a little bit teal, but a little bit cut. You know, things mm-hmm. that they, you know, move things around. But I think, yeah, Shepard is pretty much just a, a younger, hotter O'Neill, really. Mm. His name's John, too, right? Yeah, yeah. John so They're Shepherd. both got the exact same name. Like, yeah. It's, <laughs> to to yeah. really align it the same way. Yeah. Mm. But it was good to be able to hand the torch over. Yeah. Shepard, yeah. two peas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, I like the fact that they were there, too. And it, it didn't. I didn't find myself going, ah, oh, this feels empty because there's no Carter and there's no Teal'c. Because I, I guess because you know what it is. It's the start of a new show. You've got the OG characters, not even OG actors from the series, but the OG characters who birthed Stargate, the franchise. They're now helping kick off uh, the, the spin-off. And I thought, well, if you're going to have these two do it, then, you know, it, it, I don't know, just gave, it, it, it was a paying a bit of respect. It gave it a bit more... Substance. The fact that these two, it's like they were they were giving it their okay, sort of their tick of approval yeah, in a way right. that they were that they were a part of it. And you know, it feels a little bit weird that you kind of have to sit back in TV world and go, well, it's a spin off, so you can't have these characters go over there. Because while Daniel fought to go, it's not too late. Like, I can go pack my, I can go with them. Mm. It's like you absolutely would want to go yeah. and do that. Like, and da- he's the if, best qualified. Yeah, to if go. this was a proper real world military organization and and operation. Daniel, he'd be gone from SG1. He he'd been. he'd he be in Atlantis, been, yeah. no risk in the world. But it's like, no, 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 we need you as a character to be in this particular program and we'll just send off other people that have proven in the past that they're qualified, but they're not really that popular. In a way, like when you when you brought in um, McKay and you know, he was a bit of a dick to Carter and, and all that sort of thing. And mm. you know, we, while we might grow to like him, he hasn't been around long enough to earn things, but it's like, well, here, he's here, deal with it sort of thing. But yeah, Shepard, I think, was a nice middle man where it's like he is like Jack and he's a because he was so new to the franchise or the the mythology of everything he's sort of like us going to Atlantis he's learning everything for the first time while yeah. we are he yeah. helps like a new viewer who's never seen SG1 come in and yeah. say oh I can watch this whole Atlantis because I was actually surprised to hear that there was such a huge Atlantis fan base who actually have never seen SG1, yeah, which yeah. surprised yeah, I've heard me. That yeah, too. Some people are like, oh, I've, I love Atlantis, but I've never seen SG1. Yeah, it's so strange. How yeah. bizarre! How could you? That's so the many... opposite of what you should be doing. It would have been yeah, so, so cool many... if you had have watched Atlantis, right? And then you go back and watch SG1. You get to season seven, The Lost City. They go to Proclerish mm. Town, us, and it's all misty and dark. And then he sits on the on the ancient chair, and you're like, holy shit! Yeah, that would it. give you goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That'd yeah. be cool. I was thinking that during well, that then, episode. And then, you know, learning about how we made NACWA to generators because it's like half of yeah, the lasers at the true. moment is running on NACWA to generators and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? That, that was one early episode makes such a huge difference yeah. where we found that. Yeah. Technology. And then obviously, you know, we get that little cameo right up the front with um, Ayana from Frozen, seeing her. Oh, alive yeah, that and, was cool. And saying goodbye. My only concern with that isn't, and this is for the for the. Oh, news. is that? I didn't. That's the chick from Frozen. Yeah, right? yeah. that was the chick didn't, from Frozen. I didn't pick up on that. At the, the very the start, start. how it said several mil, several million years oh, ago. Oh shit! And that's, there's that's, a yeah, couple right. of ancient people talking. That's Ona Grauer. So she's saying goodbye to that guy. He jumps on Atlantis and leaves her behind in the. Um, in Antarctica. <laughs> yeah, in that little outpost. So that was, you know, she, that was where she was staying. And obviously, and she froze to, to, froze to life. Death. Yeah, <laughs> she, well, she wasn't dead. But um, she was frozen, yeah. And I've yeah. watched that prologue a couple of times actually because there was no it's one dialogue, part you've seen right? quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right. Russell. Well, that should have been across the universe. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, we, yeah, but we, we haven't been fifty million, uh, several million years ago. We are now. <laughs> yeah, but it's across the universe. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I didn't pick up on that. Yeah. Because here, I, I, one of my notes is that it's very un-Stargate-like in the way that that prelude didn't get a, a payoff in a sense. Like now that you're saying to me, okay, well, it was her and it was Atlantis leaving and, and then that was like it's all – stuff that we've seen before but for me I was like I don't know who that is and Mm. I couldn't quite tell who was leaving what to go Mm. where and it wasn't like at the end there was a tease at next week's episode that was a a continuation on the prelude or anything it was just this happened millions of years ago and now the present day and yeah. they didn't reference any characters they didn't find dead bodies of that particular guy or anything like that um, well no because um Atlantis obviously left millions of years several million years ago but the, with the hologram lady um, sort of once we we get to Atlantis she says it was only 10,000 years ago that the Atlanteans decided to abandon Atlantis because mm. they were losing the war to the Wraith and they gated back to Earth. Mm. So it's like, well, they only came back to Earth 10,000 years ago, so Anaya would have been, oh, Ayana would have been frozen in the ice long, long ago, and then you'd, you'd mm. assume all the ancients that Ayana knew who left on Atlantis yeah. would, would have died, would, would would died as well. I mean, we never really know what, a, what an ancient lifespan is, but it's not going to be several million years, you'd no. imagine. Um, but what I wanted to ask the newbies is, did that little sort of the opening of seeing Atlantis leave Earth did that kind of ruin the spectacle of when Atlantis pops up on the planet, like pops up out of the water? Because to me, that is one of the most goosebumpy, like awesome shots is Atlantis rising up with its shield and the big sort of cascading water running out. And it's like, it, we're back on the surface and the music and stuff. And I just feel like, yeah, they almost kind of... It didn't have the shield on it when it came up. Didn't it? No. It just peer, it just peeled yeah, it just over, the, over the Oh, the that's buildings. right. That's water. right. You think of something else? Yeah, I think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, not for me. I think... Because when it happened at the start, I was like, oh, shit, that's, you know, several million years ago. Like, this is this is awesome. And then when they're underwater, I didn't even think about it. I just thought, oh, okay, they they can sacrifice the rest of the city for the, the main hub. Mm. And then when they started rising up, I was like, oh, shit, it's doing it automatically. That is awesome. <laughs> mm. yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I completely forgot about the start of the episode yeah yeah, cool. did yeah it didn't ruin it for me either i think because we didn't get a, a as much of a view of the start as we did at the end it wasn't like oh there's the same shot and then mm. just changed the background a little bit around. yeah like we we sort of saw it in a distance or whatever so i just love it how you see the puddle jumper is the first thing you see mm. flying over yeah over oh, the, the, the gate cloud. ship the gate, the gate ship, ship. <laughs> finally <laughs> apparently um <laughs> in one of the special features they're talking with brad wright and he he realised, you know, I think it was like season three or four of SG-1, he's like, we really should have some kind of cool, like, ship or something. Like, because obviously at the, um, was it end of season two, beginning of season three, Hammond has his, yeah with the... With the needle threader. With the mm. needle threader. And they realised, oh, that'd be really cool. And then apparently Brad Rutt was like, no, I'm saving that for the spinoff. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to waste that idea That's amazing. for SG-1. Because it would have taken a few years for, for SG-1 and Earth to get the technology to be able to do that. So by the time they got to that point, he's like... I'm just going to save it for the spin-off and make it a, make it an ancient ship. Yeah, it's freaking cool. I think that's my most favorite thing Stargate has created. Yeah, cuz I just it's so awesome. I love the fact yeah. that it gives us the op- the opportunity to do like space gates and stuff yeah. like that which is super cool cuz imagine uh, like that was awesome. <laughs> like, imagine how many melts just, was oh, lost. Hey. Cuz like, when they when they first spotted that planet they're like why is it oh no, zoom back around oh, what oh, hang on you, you you're missing it and yeah. then you just see them flo- it's, it's the melt is floating in space and I'm like oh okay that planet's a write off that's obviously not the one yeah. they're after. Yeah. They'll have to punch in another combination or something whatever. 
and then it's like, no, no, that's we wrote it off because there's no way for us to physically survive that trip. And I was like, that's so. And then he's what? like, that's the only one we could get a lock on. And I'm like, what do you do now? Yeah. He's a dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But cool. I often sometimes so think, oh, maybe the puddle jumper is like too advanced. The fact that it goes through the gate, you can fly it through space, it can cloak and has weapons. It's mm. awesome. Kind of makes it almost invincible. But I think it just gives Atlantis the opportunity to do things and tell stories that you can't do in SG1. So yeah. I think it's, mm. you know, I, it's, it's good enough in that it, it helps tell those different stories. And, and, and I always thought in SG1 it. they should have had some kind of vehicle as well, an off-road. Yeah. The puddle jeep is what I alluded to before <laughs> to make a joke before <laughs> you guys knew about it. But the I always thought they need, at least needed something like that where they could get across desert terrain mm. or obviously not thick jungle, but when they're like, yeah, all right, we need to get there, send, a, send out a UAV and get like a, a jeep or something, that would have been cool. Yeah, because yeah, mm. I guess so much of when they discovered a world and sent the map it was you know they'd send out the drone or whatever and it'd be like oh there's nothing within 10 clicks of the gate and yeah so they knew they had a long walk before they found any kind of civilization <laughs> yeah. like, it was so much walking in sg1 yeah. it was either a lot or next to nothing because the gate was in the middle of the town whereas this yeah now it's like no 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 we we could have the gate on the other side of the planet or yeah. outside of the atmosphere. Mm. And, and the thing like. is too, from a production standpoint, it's just one little set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just, but it mm. builds the whole scope of the universe. Yeah. Like you can just keep filming in there and it, it doesn't cost anything. Mm. But in you, as a viewer, in your mind, you're seeing it, or obviously the CGI shots, but in your mind, you're like, oh, this is so awesome. They're back in the jumper. Mm. And it, for them, it's cheap yeah. to the well, action. And if you think about it, whenever SG One wants to film on location, they've got to take the like the portable gate set of like the gate and the and the stone stairs mm. and take that somewhere. Whereas in in this, it's like they just do the same thing. They just throw a, a puddle jumper set on the back of on the back of on a truck, truck yeah. dump that in the middle of the GVRD, and we've landed on the planet. Yeah, away we go. Yeah, mm. it's so cool. Yeah, because I guess too with um. With the old, the new digital gates, I guess, probably needs a lot more electricity and light and that kind of stuff. So, like, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah true. we don't want to carry one of those around. They do most of them in CGI, don't they, with Atlantis? Yeah, because I think the the one in the actual, the gatrium, which is the the Atlantis version of the, the, the embarkation the room. room yeah. <laughs> they call it the gatrium. <laughs> um, so gay. That, <laughs> <laughs> that gate's rubber. That gate's rubber. Mm. It's a big rubber gate, and it can actually... Um, it lights up. Lights up and then folds down into the floor when they actually... Want to use they? They actually use that space as like a multi-purpose room. They turn it into like their version of the um the gym, uh, the gym and the where they the, the commissary and all that kind of yeah. stuff. They actually just drop that 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 gate down into the floor, which so is pretty cool. cool. So they yeah they definitely th- thought ahead when they were um setting it all up the the uh, the set. You mentioned Mitch uh, earlier on the a f- couple of uh, characters we've seen before. Obviously, mm. one of them being. Nareem. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, what Simon. a stupid cameo that yeah. was. So is that, that's his only time in it? No, he comes, oh, he's, in he, he's got a couple, couple more. Episodes, so is he supposed to be Weir's husband or boyfriend? Partner or, or something. Yeah, yeah. Simon. He's, his name's Simon. So it's like, to, but yeah, to get ridiculous. such a, <laughs> such a recognisable, important yeah. secondary character like Nareem. Of all the people It's in great the world. to give him another job, but at least make or him. Bring an, him as a wraith or something. Yeah, make him an yeah. alien. Yeah. Put yeah. some bloody latex on his face it. or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah, for him to look exactly the same. And because until Reese asked that, I'm like, I don't know if we're going to see him again. It's just like, I mean, why would you give him that for an eight second cameo? But yeah. at the same time, when you give no context around it, and it's just him like, oh, no kidding, to a video <laughs> message. Yeah. yeah. Like, why use it? Yeah. Use, a, use, I, a, yeah. use a bloke who does craft services. Like, yeah. why does yeah. it have yeah. to be. No lines. That just was a like, dumb scene anyway. Just they a $500 cut that. day. Yeah. Yeah. I could have cut the entire scene. It meant nothing. I reckon mm. they purely did it just for that little gag at the end with the operator, like the automatic voice going, oh, the user you were calling is no longer in the coverage area. And he's like, oh, you're oh, telling yeah. me. That was the shittest little montage Wasn't ever. It? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, mate, flipping a coin in the park. Oh, I guess I'm going. <laughs> like, oh, God. Yeah, it wasn't it's great. disgusting. And, and then, then um, up, who? Shepard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Against the against the bridge, and, then, and also the Swede uh, from <laughs> I call him the Swede because that's what I saw him in first. But um, yeah, the the Link guy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, the guy um, from Revisions. Yeah, uh, the guy that Holland. makes he, <laughs> makes, yeah. makes the two guys whack each other off. <laughs> Come look yeah. at, whack off your mate Barry in the street. <laughs> Out of uh, what yeah. episode was that? Revisions. Revisions last season. The, yeah. He does the same thing in Atlantis. 
<laughs> he actually does it with, his, with those two kids, which is even more. <laughs> oh, you know. Yeah, one Adam right told you not to go in the forest. But, I mean, one's his own kid, so that's <laughs> fine. Night time. Yeah, it's fine. One's his yeah. own kid, so that's not a problem. <laughs> and there's a guy in there. Um, I'm. Sh- I don't know if he's been on um, SG One before, but the Sumner. Colonel Sumner, he's no. the Terminator. Yeah, Sumner, yeah, the Terminator. Yeah, the Terminator. He's, he's on the Sopranos as well. Oh yeah, he uh, is. In season one, as the sports, oh. the sports guy. Yeah, sports shop gets a guy. bit, in, gets a bit in over his head. But yeah, he's he was a cool actor, man. And um, wasn't that hectic how he died? Yeah, it was so good because they needed that. I think they needed a big actor to draw in the viewers, especially. Mm. And he's sci-fi royalty. Mm. Yeah, and to see him die like that, and you're like Shepard had to take him out. Yeah, so he wouldn't give up, or just for mercy, more or less. It was it's great. So yeah, good. that was a great introduction to the wraith and what they can do as well. Yeah, um, obviously shooting her through the hand, but first of all, shooting her a few times in the chest. Yeah, yeah. and then she being, just like sucks the life from him. I remember being so confused the first time I saw the episode because I I kind of missed the hand. Like, and that, that they use that, like, because mm. they've got like right. a little vagina in their hand. The sucker. That, that sucks <laughs> right. and all that kind of stuff. I feel like they didn't give us enough kind of close ups on that. So, the first, I remember the first time I watched it being very confused. It's like, how is she doing this? What's going on? What is that thing on her finger? Because that metal thing on her finger is just like a ring. Like, it's nothing mm. important. It's just something that the Wraith wear. Um, it's got nothing to do with them being able to suck the, the energy out. Yeah, I think I'd forgotten that he was in this, obviously. I knew you would. I almost reasons. brought it up a couple of months ago and I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to spoil it for Mitch. I'm going to wait yeah. so he can see that guy again. I think actually only a few weeks ago I brought his name up. I was talking about a show called The Unit that he he is in. He's not one of the main, main characters, but he's like a Hammond, basically. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, to see him and I'm like, oh, that's right, he plays and he's that guy, you know, the authority that Shepard can go against and he's the mm. jokester and stuff. But uh, And I thought, oh, that's right, he's only around for the first season. I, I remember hearing that and it's like, no, 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 <laughs> just the first episode. <laughs> but um, He was in the first season. I think that uh, I, I think that was a really cool, like for the way that his character went out, that was a really cool moment for Shepard to prove himself to the audience. Like, mm. he did a mercy kill on one of his own people. I'm like, yeah. that says a lot about yeah. him, I think. Like, in just that one little moment. He didn't like him anyway. <laughs> no, he didn't like him. Should have, should have done a headshot. But, <laughs> but I like, like he actually went through the hand into his heart. It's like, well, I'm going to cap her a little bit and I'm yeah. going to kill him and put him out shot. of his misery. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I really I really like that. But, yeah, like, yeah, he was just being a dickish sort of, you know, colonel yeah. or whatever the hell he was. I'm like, whatever. Apparent- We've seen this a thousand times. But... Yeah. Then you come to like him at the end where he's like, no, take me. You're the one that I want. And and then actually giving a bit of lip to whatever the chick's name was. And the queen. Yeah, the queen. At yeah. the end, yeah, didn't Shepard right. say to we oh, we don't leave people behind. That's not what we do. Yeah. He sure left Sumner there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he killed him first. He didn't leave him to the enemy. Yeah, he left behind. Leave what, no one alive yeah. behind. Left behind I mean, we don't leave him to torture. Left Sumner. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But apparently right. the um, the original... I got his wallet though, so <laughs> it's a bonus. <laughs> apparently the original design for the Wraith is they were going to have wings. And I'm like, oh God, I'm so yeah. glad they didn't give the Wraith wings. Yeah. That would have looked terrible. With gargoyles. Yeah, there's no way to convincingly do wings on like a television budget. No. <laughs> on, a, on a regular occasion. <laughs> that would have been dumb. Yeah. Like, no way. Although it would have been cool at night, them cruising around, flying around like a gargoyle. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been sick. Even right now, I think like th- if they're to be the bad guy, the villain race, like the Gould in SG One, at least the Gould are very humanoid. And it's very easy to accept them, and they're like little differences whether they glow their eyes or their skin's a little bit, you know, golden or whatever, you know, like Apophis or the Jafar. They got a split in their in their abdomen. These guys are like full on makeup, prosthetic, heavy, mm. and stuff. It's yeah. like we don't usually commit to that a lot in Stargate. So yeah. for them to do that, it's like. Like even you saying before that Atlantis grew its own fan base that wasn't originally part of the fan base from SG One. So this show starts. It's like, yeah, well, we're on Earth, but then we go to this distant place. We're in a CGI city, and then we just go to another planet. We meet up with these other people, and then these very ugly-looking creature, you know, mouth-breathing, sort of growling, <laughs> very animalistic bad guys. It's like, okay, this is a sci-fi show. Like, it's mm. it's not just about who they are and what they say. Like, they're ghouled. Like, they're humanoids, but they're very evil, and, and we find a lot about them through dialogue. The, the race say a lot about who they are from the way they look, so it very much sets itself apart from what um, SG-1 is. I'm, and I'm, I'm interested to see who comes... Next, like the first three scenes we have of them, they just come up to Sumner and go, <sighs> yeah, yeah, and, away. and then they come up again, 
and walk away. And I'm like, Oh, well, you're the one that's been calling me at home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the thought it was my ex wife. <laughs> you sound like her. You know, and she's coming. Look up like her as well. <laughs> And because of all the makeup, she's doing that very thing. She's having to open her mouth. Yeah, a lot. she's just got the fake teeth as well. Yeah. The fake yeah. teeth. So I felt for the They actress. get rid of that a bit. A bit. Mm. But then but like when she, when, sexy. when she... Yeah, no, I'm looking at her going, kind of a little like bit. Aliens, vampires. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You suck what? With X. Oh, <laughs> with a life oh. force. Oh. No, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've never been sucked that hard before. <laughs> I've never had a. I've never had sex with a vagina and a hand job at the same time. But all right, let's go for I'm it. Like, hey, we're in a different galaxy. I'm open to it. This could kill you, though. Oh, let's go. <laughs> and everything's legal in the Pegasus. <laughs> <laughs> self destruct I kind of um, flip back and forth on whether I like the way the Wraith are written or not because it's like I like – most of the time I'm like I like the idea that they're very similar to the Gua world in that they're not just killing humans for funsies. Mm. Like the Gua world – take humans as hosts. The Gua will yeah. need human and hosts. And slave them to, for Nequadria yeah, for and, the technology. And they biologically they kind of they need them to live. Like they live a better life in a human host than they do swimming around in little pools. And the Wraith are kind of almost like a copycat of that in that they need humans to live. Mm. Yeah, so it's, it's like we're cattle to them. We need cattle. Yeah. So it's like sometimes I'm yeah. kind of like, I like that because it's it's not just the Wraith killing us for the for shits and giggles. They're doing it for a reason in the same way the mm. good. But other, and other times I'm like Oh, that's just lazy. They're just doing the Gua Wool, but changing it a little bit. So it's weird. I've yeah. never, like, I always seem to flip back and forward for some reason. And, like, and, whether, no, it's, I love them. whether it's shit writing or good writing. <laughs> yeah. And it gave more meaning to how, like, full, like, 10 hard she went when she's like, are there thousands of millions? Mm. More. More. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, because yeah. they're food to you, man. Like, if they pan yeah. down, you'd see your nipples. Just yeah. Hard <laughs> Whereas the gold, like, it's almost glass. like they get pleasure. It's not just nutrients. Yeah. Uh, value, but it's also mm. pleasure. Yeah. It's like eating McDonald's, man. Yeah, it's like we're, yeah, totally. It's mouth pleasure. Yeah, we're chocolate. <laughs> yeah. We're not. We're not broccoli. We're chocolate. Yeah, yeah. yeah they could eat a cow, but that's like vegetables. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> whereas, <laughs> whereas, uh, like in SD one with the Gould, like they would love the idea that there are billions of us, but it's not like every planet we go out there that's under Gould control. Every human has a Gould in them. They're just slaves. It's like they yeah. want. They want to rule you. They don't necessarily need to infest you and enslave you the way that they go, oh, they're going to put a snake in your head. Like whenever Jack tried to convince someone of S- in SG-1 of like season three through to five or whatever, you're, they're going to come down here and they're going to do this, they're going to put a snake in every one of you. It's like they don't do that anywhere. There's a snake in a couple of people, mm. but otherwise they just sort of get off on the fact that people are praying to them yeah, essentially. Yeah, there you go, yeah. yeah, and I, I was thinking about because I was thinking about it, the old, did anyone read the old book series Animorphs? And I, I bring that up because... I never really read it much, but I watched the TV show a hell of a lot. Yeah. It, the books came out, I want to say 97, so same year as SG-1 premiered. It's ba- like it's the same shit, whereas mm. like the Gould would have... A, they're a little snake-like kind of creature, and they would go in and they'd take over your brain and you'd be a different person, and you'd go under their control. Same with the, the Yerks, and, or Yerks, I don't know how it's properly pronounced, I don't know, the, the written word, in Animorphs, where they're little slugs, they crawl in your ear, and they take over your brain, and you're controlled by them. Planet of the Apes. Yeah. That's how it started. <laughs> but when I, when I, I always thought of like, oh, I wonder who, like, obviously the, the, the author saw SG-1 and went, oh, shit, that's cool. I've been looking for, like, the finisher <laughs> of that idea. But at least with the books... They did want to enslave. So the idea of them coming to Earth, and there are billions of us. There are more of us on our planet than any other planet out there with um, sentient creatures. They could come down and have billions of themselves take over hosts and stuff, whereas the Gould never did that. So now that we get the Wraith, and it's like, we could feast endlessly on you guys. Mm. Yeah. And that is just so tasty. Yeah, they have to, to them, hibernate. Like, they have to yeah. hibernate for so long because there's not enough humans in the galaxy mm. have just gone through and eaten everyone. Yeah. yeah. They're the, basically the hyenas from the Lion King. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They've gone nuts. So I like that. So it's, it's a big threat. Yeah. Is that where the sleepers are? Is just more wraith? More wraith. Yeah. So basically they're set up as, as like a hive. So there's kind of one queen. Mm. Then she's got... It's like an ant colony. Yeah. So she's got yeah, a, a right. bunch of lieutenants, which are the ones where you can kind of see their faces and they got like the white dreads and stuff. Oh, that guy's mangy face. Yeah. And then yeah. there's the... Yeah, the, I don't like those ones. Then there's the drones where they just have the scab face and the, the, they don't say anything. So there's kind right, of... Right, scab kind of, face. Yeah, yeah, there's kind of three tiers of wraith. But it's typically one queen, and then she has her hive. Is basically. So the why do they wake up when she dies? That I don't know because I don't. Yeah, I don't think they've really yeah. set it up yet because they call her the caretaker in this. Yeah. Right. Um, whereas I think they kind of rejig that a little bit, and they do a couple of things in this 
um, they kind of rejig the law that instead of being caretakers, they're queens. And then that ability they have to make us kind of freak out and see shadows and freak out, they kind of, that kind of falls away yeah, very quickly. Right. Similar to like when SG-1 started and we used to like fall through the Stargate covered in ice and mm. stuff like that and how that kind of drifted away, that kind of does the same thing. You know, the Wraith don't really use that ability much. And then even Taylor, who we haven't really spoken about much yet, she's kind of made out to kind of be the teal of, of, of Atlantis. And you see her, like, she's almost got, like, superhuman cat-like abilities, the way she's, like, jumping and leaping and running super fast. And even that stuff, I find they kind of dial back quite a lot. Like, she's still a warrior, mm. but yeah, they kind she's of... Yeah, she's crushing uh, Shepard when yeah. they're running through the bush. She's like, wait up! Yeah, <laughs> Mind they... you, he's got a full pack. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, they definitely dial back yeah. her kind of supernaturalish kind of abilities. Because didn't she... Yeah, I, th- I thought she was, like, um, teleporting when she was running through the, running through the bush when the wraiths first came. Mm. And then she like, and then Shepard starts shooting at nothing, and then she teleports straight back to him. There's nothing there. I was like, because there's this mist around. Because oh, she comes through the dark. Oh, yeah, the mist is from the wraith. The mist, yeah. yeah, the wraith yeah, are making the mist. Right. But it's, oh, I thought the same thing, and I'm like, she's really? like, no, don't worry about the wraith. That's not really them. They're not really here. And I'm like, yeah, but what are you up to? <laughs> what, are you, yeah. what are you going? You're on running in circles. Sailor? What are yeah. you? <laughs> you went to the right, and you came back from over there. Yeah, it was a bit weird. <laughs> And uh, so, what did you guys think of the uh, the new Atlantis uniforms? So bad. Yeah, I feel they like they look terrible. I feel like um, you know, as a, a, a sci-fi show with solid color blocking to determine your department. Where have I seen that before? <laughs> yeah, the rest of it was. Where have I seen that red in yeah. command? It just and looks so dorky. Yellow doing science. We have uniforms. We're not the military. Hang on, are you saying that in world they've been influenced by Star Trek, just like the other with- week when Trump? Release the Space Force logo, and it's yeah, like, yeah. holy shit, man! That's without actually doubt, Star Trek, like without a doubt. Someone released a Stargate SG One. You know the the symbol. They've got the actual Earth, and mm. then they've got the point of origin covering the Earth mm. with the circle around it as well. It looks very similar. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can you can give me a that's one and a that's two for this, but oh, I did want to I did want to yes, bring please. it up for any of the <laughs> any of the Trekkies that are listening. In that there aren't Atlantis is ba- <laughs> <laughs> Atlantis is basically Deep Space Nine. Like SG One is the next generation. It's the most popular. Well, now I'm never going to watch it. It's the it's the most <laughs> popular. It's the one everyone loves. It's the core team. In DS Nine, they took characters from Next Generation and put them into DS Nine, like Cole Meany, you know, who actually ends up this show. Oh so, yeah. So Atlantis has done the same thing. They've taken characters from SG One mm. and popped them in here, and they're on a space station in Deep Space Nine, kind of like Atlantis is Deep Space Nine. And then Stargate Universe is basically Voyager. So it's almost like they've kind of used yeah. that similar kind of... I was watering it down as they go yeah. along. Yeah. yeah. That's one. That's two. Okay yeah. Just, that. just to be safe. Well, okay that's fine. That. Well, <laughs> you know, it's funny you said that they're borrowing characters from the, you know, the popular main show and taking them off to the next because then it's like, well, we're going to take the most popular ones like Weir and McKay. <laughs> <laughs> Build a show around them. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, you know yeah, that guy yeah, that yeah. come along and replaced Hammond, and then Hammond left, and then that, then she just like left Hammond's post, and like Hammond didn't come back. She's your new boss. Mm. Oh man! Actually, God. I did find something weird about Weir there, and at the at the start, how she, she says to O'Neill, "Yes, of course, I've been selecting members of this expedition for months." I'm like months. You're in charge of the SGC last week in yeah. SG One. <laughs> Actually, not even last week. Like today, well, yeah. it used to air one after the other. Mm. So if you if you're in in charge of the SGC before they f- find the lost city, why are you choosing expedition members? That didn't yeah. make sense. It, yeah. it is weird, yeah. Because I remember, I think this is one of the first times I was actually I saw these episodes on television before the DVDs came out. Is they played New Order and then played Rising straight after mm. it. Yeah. Um, I think we get a little more context on that in the next episode of SG One. Lockdown and Zero Hour, I believe. Hmm. Um, that yeah, there is this weird sort of time jump in there, which yeah doesn't doesn't really track. Doesn't, yeah. make, doesn't quite make sense. She could be putting the task force together while she's still running SG One. But she did, they didn't know. Remember, don't forget Lost City. They didn't know where Atlantis was, and so the, and then also like the start of Atlantis is Daniel figures it out. He's like, hey, guys, yeah, I know right. we're in Antarctica, but look, I just yeah. found the lost city. Yeah, and she's okay. like, I've been picking expedition members for months. And it wasn't but you didn't until... even know where it was. 
Yeah, and like through New mm. Order, didn't even know it existed. She was in charge. She was just a new person in charge of the SGC. It wasn't until the end when Jack yeah, was back true. they decided, yeah, okay, the we're pushing you over. Jack's the general, and Hammond is going up a tier, and he's going to go to the Pentagon. Mm. Yeah, because um, at the start when I started watching this episode, I actually had to stop and go back, or, or like Google what you know what episode aired when. Because I'm like, I feel like there's a whole chunk that I'm missing, like mm. timeline wise. Because they go through and and sort of just try to explain it all away, and I'm like, there's too much that's happened to not see all this. And all of a sudden, you know, everyone knows, and they're, you know, they've got all these countries in in yeah. at Antarctica, and I know they touched on that, but it was just it was too much. It was too advanced in the in the process to sort of story but then yeah i was like okay so that is where they started off but yeah i was i was confused for a little bit there and i feel like it was a bit slow like why why go to all the effort of putting that big elevator all the way down that ice shaft when we know that there's a set of rings at the bottom (laughs) yeah why don't just just put a set of rings up the top or just park the cargo ship there yeah Yeah, exactly and then when everyone can just ring down i was a bit upset with that yeah, that's strange. The only thing that really didn't make sense to me in this episode, and I think it might have been like we spoke about back in Exodus where it's like the CGI did the story wrong, is at right at the end, once we've rescued everybody, we're back on the puddle jumper and we're cloaked and we're heading to the space gate and there's the big blockade of like the Wraith darts, the little ships there. And he's like, oh, they could just start, as soon as we activate the gate, they can just start firing blindly and hit us. We're cloaked. All the darts are in front of yeah. the, the Stargate yeah. and facing outwards. Mm. Why not just go to behind the Stargate, dial it up, and then just go, yeah. turn around That's and exactly what I in. thought. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think it was just, the, yeah, the, the CGI doing them wrong. And there is this weird unwritten rule that they never talk about in Atlantis in that the puddle jumpers never <laughs> never go through the gate cloaked. The wrong way. No, oh, no, yeah. no, they never go through cloaked. Uh, and it's like in so yeah, many right. situations that would actually solve the issue if mm. we if we just went through the Stargate close. And they never explain it. They never address it at all, never explain it. It's never even an option that someone throws up and says, let's just fly through cloaked. Or try. Yeah, or try. <laughs> but apparently, um, and apparently the fans have sort of brought that up, you know, within the first season because fans were kind of on that straight away. I mean, what the hell, man? Mm. And then so if you notice really closely on the dashboard of a, of a puddle jumper, like if we're looking in... In the in the screen in the windscreen, looking at them, there's um, ancient writing just in the front of the dashboard, and apparently that they've made the joke that that basically says never enter a wormhole cloaked. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like because they also make fun of the fact that like as cool as the gatrium looks when you step through the gate into Atlantis, there's that fucking awesome set of stairs with yeah. all the writing on it. But if you think it, if you're an ancient, what does that say? Please watch yeah, your step. Exactly. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Go here to get your, you know, your shots. Cause you've like, there's yeah, a lot of is. writing on those stairs. Yeah. Yeah. We is office this way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Work harder. Yeah. Please check your, <laughs> have your passport stamped here, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's very sort of weird. Maybe it's just graffiti. Yeah, <laughs> that would be that would be ancient graffiti. Maybe like it is so kind ad- of like yeah. so you know, advanced graffiti. They have it like cut into the stairs and it lights up. Like that's their kind of graffiti. In God we trust. Shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the one of the biggest questions I had about this episode was where the heck is Walter? Yes, great call. They just got some schlup. They were in the SG one or the SGC oh, embarkation yeah. room and. I, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. You know, they, they're going to go out of the galaxy. And then, like, they they made the effort to have O'Neill and Jackson in this episode. But some random guy that looked like the dad from Full House with glasses on <laughs> was running the gate. And I'm like, well, if you're going to sell it, that these guys are actually going from the SGC, then you got to put Walter in. Yeah. Well, I, only, I had two thoughts on that. I thought, one, they just couldn't afford him. Mm, you know, they just yeah, couldn't afford his rates. Him. Or two, <laughs> they just didn't want to make fun of him. Chevron one encoded. Academy. What? <laughs> so they've just basically made fun of Walter's entire yeah, entire fun. role there. <laughs> 
<laughs> like oh, it at McKay, he's just like, oh, this is the way they do it. So yeah. I have he's to like, do it like, like I would know. She I have the best experience. Chevron one and go, and then looks at her. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like he just wanted to see how it worked too. Yeah. They haven't dialed out. Well, that's this. that's yeah. true. He's just like, oh, that's cool. I did like that when um, when old mate figures out um, the the shield iris, and then McKay's like using power, using power, using power, yeah, that using was power. Cool. power, yeah. He didn't turn it off. He's like, I'm above pressing that button. <laughs> make you look like an idiot and drown rather than do it myself. I did like too when um, Weir and O'Neill were kind of doing their walk and talk where she's like, we need him, we need him, we need him. And he thinks she's talking about Daniel, but she's actually talking about Shepard. We don't want that gig. Yeah. And if you notice closely, <laughs> at one point they kind of walk past O'Neill's stasis chamber, which is back down there now. And he kind of side eyes oh, yeah, it. He does as a he double take. Past and does a double oh, take. Right. And I'm like... That's just a nice. That's classic, like RDA touch. Yeah, right that there. was nice. <laughs> I, I found it weird that O'Neill sent through a large bottle of champagne. Yeah, uh, it was like a magnum or something, wasn't it? It was massive. But like, not that massive. Like, it seems, I don't know, elitist to me. It's like, oh, uh, this is for the executives because <laughs> they're not gonna. Like, is everyone gonna get a glass no, of champagne? Yeah, yeah mate, well, everyone got like a paper cup size. Like, <laughs> yeah, a little paper yeah. cup. Because when get. she came out to Shep and she's like, oh, I think we open this, cur- uh, you know, courtesy of Brigadier General Jack O'Neill, and they're like having a sip or whatever, and then it cuts back to uh, after Taylor comes up to Shepard and was like, oh yeah, I'll help you make friends, blah blah blah. She's giving him the look, and then Beckett's over there go, what do I do to get any friends like that? And he, he's having a drink, and I'm like. You're, hang on, you're drinking from the same kind of cup, which obviously it's standard issue. Mm. Are you also drinking champagne? Is everyone around you? Did everyone just get like yeah. a little, like, just a yeah. little few just bubbles? Just a capful. Just I a don't capful. think so. Yeah, did, they no. get, did they let the Athosians have some? Because there's a whole bunch more Athosians on top nah, of the you don't know. No, you don't want to give them for them. But yeah. them. It's better than a box of tissues. Well, that, <laughs> that's true. Well, well I feel I like... I was hoping O'Neill being O'Neill would just roll through a kegger. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> a keg of beer, <laughs> Guinness even. Oh, I mean, Keep it warm. No, you know what? He... He tapped that through. bitch. They gave it to him, but that's in his fridge at his <laughs> house. He sends through like the beer bong, and like you, so you don't know what's coming down it's the other just end. Pouring out, you just like got it, you got the hose there, and then all of a sudden just froth. So you're like, oh shit, I'm up. So you got funny. all the alcos sipping off the grand. <laughs> Couple of months alone on the on that um, in that city though, like you you know McKay's gonna need a box of tissues. He's gonna need a box of tissues. For sure. So is so is Beckett. He'd byo. <laughs> don't, don't the Atlant- Atlanteans have like self cleaning floors or robo vacuum? Oh, you want to hope so. Things. Oh, shit, surely. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just over the balcony. Just All you have to do is think about it and it happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like, Shepard's like, uh, um, he, you know, he finds that um, GPS, the GP- GPS, which they call life signs detector. We'll name and he's it like, later. now I'm just, li- oh, now, what are you thinking about now, sir? I'm just thinking about a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was worth, worth, worth a try. try. <laughs> it's like that, uh, that episode. Well, of- somebody <laughs> is going to give me a, oh, God. It's like that episode of Family Guy where they just they go to the future. It's like, oh, I need to take a shit. Poop removal. Poop removed. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. All right. I think that's something that got me a little bit was there was just a couple of like very timely coincidences about the way that the story flowed. And I guess the first one's the least offensive way by any means, but like just Shepard's the one flying O'Neill there. Like could have been anyone, but Shepard's the one that's doing it. He gets there, he just sits down, it's like, boom, you can do it. Oh, sh- oh you just happen to be the best at it than anyone else here. Apart from yeah. Jack. Well, apart from Jack. He's, he's not, got he's not the getting, gene. Yeah, he's got the gene. Yeah. And... Then he they go there, and then by them being there, then okay, that all the the power starts to be used, and everything starts to get screwed up. Blah blah. Oh, we're going to need to find this power source. Oh, we'll just punch in an address. And the the time they go there, they meet up with these people. They go, oh, there's this group called the Wraith. Haven't seen them in like ages. Like never. They're hardly ever here. We're just always scared <laughs> of them. Mm, yeah. They come that night. Like yeah. yeah. If you know Shepard had have come the next day or the day before, no. The reason that they like, came was because they went to the ancient ruins and they found that that and they set off the sensor in the ancient Where? ruins. In the ancient ruins, that's what I got the idea of. Because there is warning, warning, warning them: don't go to the ancient ruins because the wraith will come. Oh, Where yeah, he finds right. that necklace, yeah. And she goes, I haven't been here for years. Yeah. But then she... Since the last culling. <laughs> yeah, but then, well, sh- didn't she say she was there as a little kid, but they, the Wraith haven't been there for five generations? I yeah. think we're getting into spoiler territory for a couple of episodes' time. That that particular issue is resolved in a couple of weeks. Well, I'm talking about the problem now! <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no, that's, that's for enough. I think the one thing that, that made me think about that stuff, though, was Taylor where... 
she's walking through a ship and like there's shit going off there's explosions back near the the village and shit the other team they've seen these ships come out of the gate and it goes back to Taylor and Shepard they're walking through they can't hear anything it's all peaceful and then all of a sudden and then immediately she goes it's the wraith I'm like yeah. How do you, you know? You just said it's been generations yeah. since yeah, they were that, here. I think that and was the dumbest line. They should what have it was. just said the last couple of years or whatever. Yeah. 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 I think that was the silly silly writing port plot they put mm. in there. It's funny when you were just saying before, Mitch, about how, you know, Shepard being the had just happened to be the one, you know, shuttling uh O'Neill there and happens to be the one with the ATA gene that can mm. work there. And I'm like, can you imagine if Stargate did get rebooted in twenty twenty and they did a similar thing? Imagine all the butt hurt internet boys that would be like, if they made that character a female, suddenly she'd be a Mary Sue. Mm. But because, you know, because it's Shepard and he's a man, it's fine. Yeah. Because he just happens to have all the things that they need. All those like Star Wars fanboys who hate on Ray and all that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, oh. could, yeah. They've never accused Shepard of being a Mary Sue. <laughs> yeah. And maybe, maybe I wonder whether how much that had to do because he was so much like Jack, because he's already so much like someone else we do like. It's like, ah, oh, it's. Yeah, you can probably accept it more. Yeah. You're already. You're already fighting against where's my team like mm. for me it was always like sg1 should be here not these yeah. assholes yeah how are they not the first yeah. to go through and then yeah. come back and go we need to set up a base here yeah we'll go through and explore more of this galaxy and pegasus mm. galaxy once we sort out the ghouls. yeah i know. feel i would have loved that for the end of season seven or start of season eight for them actually to go there and be like shit all right, yeah, that like he just said, and then all right, send an exposition team. Yeah, well, originally, um, imagine if that was like the closing shot. Sorry, of of season whatever. Yeah, and they're season, in Atlantis, and yeah. they're looking out, and they're underwater or something. Boom, closes to black. Yeah. And it's yeah. like holy shit, where's this show possibly going to go? Well, the original ending for Lost City is that it wasn't going to be the outpost down in Antarctica. It was going to be. It was going to be Atlantis, yeah. but then when they realized it was, um, they want like. MGM and Sci-Fi wanted the shows to run concurrently. They said, "Okay, well, we don't want to be in an episode of Atlantis and someone to think, oh, why doesn't SG run just rock in and save the day?" So they intentionally moved Atlantis out of contact range. Yeah, and that's why they met like so they couldn't come back. Um, just because, yeah, I think that would be the, the 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 go-to would be like, well, if they can get back quick and easy, well, then get SG one in here to save the day. Yeah, I guess so, so they could they could have written around it as well. Like ZPM ran out of juice at the last second. <laughs> like, yeah could have been anything well because they even used that for this at the end of the episode They're yeah we like, can't go back to earth because yeah so what's the zpm that's the necro generator that, that's the one that o'neill took out and taonas proclarouche the little glowy you know the rock. little glowy crystal yeah right that's it that's the, the zpm yeah so they or zpm as they call yeah, it yeah so ZPM. we we still have that on earth we have that one that's, um but it would it, it's a lot weaker now like i don't think we used all our energy in that to dial atlantis but then when we get to Atlantis, all of Atlantis is running on one of those that's almost depleted. Um, yeah, right. And basically by the, the energy that we use up when we're there and the energy to release it and get it to the to the surface depletes, the, depletes the ZPM. Yeah. So now at the moment, Atlantis is just running on... Um, our Nacota generators. Our generators. Was there, what was something in SG-1 that was Z, Z something? An acronym. ZPM. Was that the same thing? No, in I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they've. they've I think no, this, they don't this say was it, the introdu- mate, I'm just thinking. Were you thinking about that when Daniel says, "Oh, he says ZPM, he's Canadian." Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was funny. No, there was yeah. some, there's something in Stargate SG One where they it's a Z. It's a partner. No, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> there's an acronym, three letter acronym with Z in it. Z. And Matty always used to say Z. No, he was saying ZPM. That's ZPM. Z- yeah, he's saying. Yeah, so... Um, it was a gun or something. No, that's the T-E-R. Is no, the, is Maddie's the just always jumped ahead assume, pretending not to care about what you... No, yeah. <laughs> spoiler land. So wh- what right. we were talking about back then is, remember in the fifth race, the first time Jack got the the ancient knowledge downloaded to him and he built the um, that energy the power, source, that power source that power allowed source. him to dial right. the Asgard. That's a little If you go, go back and watch um, fifth race now, you'll notice that energy device looks a hell of a lot like a ZPM. Right. So that would that would be what that is, yeah. Yeah, we were just yeah, talking okay. about yeah. that but, without you knowing what it was. Yeah, so in in the same way that at the end of the first episode of SG One, like our our standing orders are to go out and find technology to help us fight the Goa world. Atlantis's standing mission now is to go out in, into the Pe- Pegasi galaxies. Pe- 
Pegasus Galaxy. Pegasus Galaxy. <laughs> yeah. And, find and find ZPMs. <laughs> yeah. A, for us so we can dial back home, but B, so we've got more ZPMs to take back to Earth to, to power the gate. The, and the also chair. power the shields for Atlantis. Yeah. If we are, and, otherwise, we're just sitting ducks now. Yeah, and power the sh- the um, the chair down in Antarctica against the gold and all that kind of stuff. How right. were the ancients not running Atlantis on some fucking sweet solar panels like I know they had the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. city underneath the water for a long while but obviously it's got the option where well, when you, it can be on top when you find out what a zero point module does or did he mention it uh, he what it talks, does? talks about um, vacuum energy it all, that yeah. all goes over my head when yeah. he talks about but basically, basically they'll, they'll go through it later on without spoiling it for you but it it's a lot better than solar power. Yeah. yeah. No, and but I just mean all... they could run like they could run the the graffiti writing on the stairs of solar power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and sure. conserve that energy from for the, the ZPM, shields and weapons, and shields and, and, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And stuff, you know. Yeah, well, no, there is also, I think it might be episode nine or ten, which is one of my favorite episodes. Um, it does also talk about um, Atlantis's energy requirements yeah. and, and yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. So we'll definitely get into that. I just love the idea that someone else, as part of that team is like really anal, like your angry dad, like, turn the Lights off in this yeah. place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Power, this they keep turning on by themselves. Yeah. That's the worst. Yeah, exactly. Actually, I saw a meme the other day of Hammond doing about talking about yeah, that. Right. I'll see if I can find it. Is that um, those lights turning on by, them, by themselves? Is that for anyone with an ancient gene? Because I noticed they they weren't turning on until Shepard walked down there. Or yeah, I think yeah. the guy comes oh, in and says, "Oh, we've noticed that some of these systems they don't need someone with the gene to use it, but they do need to to initialize it." first yeah, and right. then someone else can use it like the gate room mm. yeah okay. Yeah. I think the the main thing annoyed me about Weir the reason I disliked her especially in this episode is that Shepard says to McKay find like there's 700 addresses find the one that doesn't that you can get a lock on and send a map and then Weir's like Shepard I want to talk to you and he's mm. like what and then they have a whole argument she's like I need more evidence and he's like but I'm like, he didn't say send a team. He said send a map. Mm. So he's trying yeah. to get that information. And he's trying to talk her into going back and making a rescue. Mm. It's like, why am I talking you into doing the right thing? Yeah. Aren't you a negotiator? Yeah. Like, like, and yeah, you're trying to bring me at him. <laughs> yeah, it was very, I kind of found it, it was interesting in the way that it's it's almost like the Dan, it's the constant Daniel and Jack argument. Yeah. But flipped because like. Yeah, but you wouldn't see because Hammond Weir and Jack is, doing that. No, but but it's like th- one's a civilian and one's a military person. But the flip side is it is like Weir is basically Daniel Jackson, basically, but she's in charge. Whereas it's always been Jack has been in charge and he can pull rank on mm. on Jackson. And at the end of the and so I kind of like the fact that it's kind of that that yeah I just found flip it really weird. Like Reese said, she's supposed to be this great negotiator, and she's kind of yelling, yelling at him, and he's like, "But this is what we do. Mm. We don't this leave why you, I like behind. that. This is why you brought me. Is I'm the ranking military officer yeah. now, and mm. this is why you brought me here. Like I didn't know shit about any of this a week ago. Yeah, I found out I could do something, so I'm basically doing you a favor by giving mm. up everything I could or whatever. But I did like that line where he's like you know what you're saying is wrong that's why yeah. you brought me here to talk by yourself mm. and she kind of yeah, went, oh, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> he I, called I, her out on so <laughs> much that shit was her, that was her only negotiation is all right i get your point now get mine yeah that like, wasn't okay, very nice yeah. that's where you've met him halfway <laughs> like, well i think she was right in the fact that she was like well if you just go off half cocked you're gonna die as well yeah you, but he never said that he just said send a mouth yeah like, but if 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 you go back and listen to that she's kind of like She's like, well, then what? And he's like, well, we'll go and rescue them. And she's like, no, no, you're too impulsive. You need to slow down and actually plan something. So she's the one that puts it in his head and says, look, yeah. if, if you can... She's a handbrake. Yeah, she says, <laughs> if you can give me um, a solid plan to rescue them, I'll give you the go-ahead, but I'm not going to send you right away without some kind of yeah, tactical advantage. Yeah, but why advantage. not go start with that instead of... And, like, that's what I mean, like... Well, they're, yeah, they're getting to know each other. He just said, send a malp. Yeah, they're, well, they're, like, they're getting to know going, each other. F- you. Like, I'd understand if he went, we're sending a team, let's go. And she's like, dude, come on. Yeah, I think I think that her being a negotiator, I would think her first option wouldn't be to shut it down. She'd be like, okay, I accept that point, but what about this? Let's negotiate rather than not nah, you do what I do. Like, she's spent how well, many years as a negotiator? I think she she does negotiate. Well, well, first of all, she's like, I'm in charge. And I think she's kind of put it, trying to put her foot down and say, J- yes, I'm a civilian. And it is a running theme with, with we are not feeling in charge, even though she is in charge because she's dealing so much with the military. But I think she buys it back again and she's, okay, I hear what you're saying, now hear what I'm saying. And that was her turning on her negotiator button. I think she took too long to get there. 
Yeah. Um, she definitely could have, could have done that earlier on, but I think she was trying to establish her dominance. But to me, it was that line was almost like, yeah, 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 stop talking, now listen to me. Yeah. Like that was just her way of telling him to shut yeah. up and listen. Yeah, but oh, I think- I hear your point. And he's like, oh, okay, now listen to me. Yeah. Mother- but I think she was right in that she says, okay, well, give give me something. I want to give you the go ahead. Give me something that'll let yeah. me say yes to you. And that's when he goes and figures out that we've got the puddle yeah. jumpers and they can found... cloak and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, and mate... then she's like, okay, well, if I knew we had these invisible ships, I would have said yes before and fucking go for it, mate. Yeah. And I think so... about what I like. But her... the guy said, well, you got to see this. Oh, so there's a lot I have to see. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I like about her being in charge of Atlantis as opposed to SG-1 where the big problem when she got put in the role or was being told that she was going to be put in the role and it was like, well, it's, it's not like Hammond's a pushover. He is just, he's l- learnt with SG-1 and that's why they might mm. not do the way, that, they might not do things the way that the government want them to do or even the rest of the military want to do. They just do the way, they just do things the way that they know they have to do it based on past experiences because they've learnt that from the get-go. And that's sort of what they're doing now. Weir's in charge of this thing for the first time. Shepard's doing this for the first time as far as aliens and a whole new threat. But they are also coming at it knowing that from what SG-1 have encountered with the ghoul, these Wraith aren't just going to be like, oh, this is aliens, maybe we can whatever. It's just like, no... We know what kind of threat they can yeah. be. Yeah, and it did we... take her a second to, to get that. She's like, maybe we can peacefully. He's like, are you f***ing serious? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And it was like, I know you can go into a big dialogue, but it was basically like, we're not doing that with a Gould back in our own galaxy. They're the Gould here, okay? That's this spin-off version of the Gould. Like, mm. <laughs> we can't, not peaceful, nothing. They came in, they stole people, and they're killing them. Like, it, And they've yeah. been doing it for generations. No chance, like, yeah. Choice. yeah, And I feel like if if she was an ad, like an, a general or something like that, he wouldn't have pushed back so hard. Mm. Whereas, like, if you know, if no, if that sure. if that was Shepard in front of Hammond, and Hammond said no, he'd be like, "I need to do something else." But he's yeah. not used to answering to a civilian, and that's a running theme throughout, like, yeah. All five and I like seasons. I like that so, about this uh, about um, Atlantis because they can do a lot of things that you can't do under a military rule. Yeah, like you know, a lot of scientific shit that they get away with in latest in later episodes. Yeah, that's it. It gets very very sci-fi. Yeah. The only other thing I wanted to say is the whole Athosian thing, you know, the um, Taylor's race. Yeah. F- waste of time. <laughs> they do nothing except take up space and supplies. They should have just culled them all <laughs> and then Taylor was to survive. Do you know what I love though? Is I've I've always wanted to I've always wanted to do one of those head touches. The little forehead touches. Come I don't on know then, why. get over here. <laughs> <laughs> there you I don't go. know. There's something about that. It's like it's like it's like the most intimate. I feel like it's the most intimate thing you can do without actually being intimate with somebody. Like because there's no sexual content. You're not kissing. You're not anything like. You're not great. It's just it's like Eskimos. Yeah, it's like a head touch. And I'm just I don't know. For can you say about Eskimo? That seems... The Maoris. Yeah. No, you have to Maori. say Inuit these days. Mm. They're into what? And I don't think Inuit. they're. Inuit. I don't think they're even. Inuit. Inuit. I don't even think they're Inuit <laughs> kisses either. Worse. So, and isn't that nose? I think Inuit kisses are nose, aren't they? Inuit. Yeah, that's going to kiss. Yeah. It's time, time to find out if Reese has been paying attention. Oh, thank All God right. still Reese. For those Woo. new to this <laughs> podcast for the Atlantis, we have the new guy, Reese. Should be, Atlantis should be find out if Mitch is paying attention. Well, I haven't prepared that, yeah, so we, maybe we, next time. We don't have the audio it's to say. It's time to out if Mitch has been paying oh, attention. God, no, no, I'm yeah, we don't have the, the audio so to do say have Mitch, your newbies, father, so made we, you wrong. We're going to try and uh, come up with something else. Maybe, maybe not. Well, maybe there is a character There is a character in a few seasons called Mitchell. Maybe we can steal some audio about that. Yeah, I was thinking about that. That's interesting. And someone did write into us a couple of seasons ago and said there's a great... Um, audio cut from season two of Atlantis that could be used as a um, uh, a reward oh, when yeah. Reese does get things correct. Mm. So, and it won't come from Daniel for a change. So that'd be nice. Oh yes, no, it won't. Five questions for you, Reese. Your time thirty seconds on the clock. Your time starts after this first question. Mm. The Wraith are an evil alien race in the Pegasus Galaxy. True. The name one of their abilities. Uh, they make you see shit. Correct. What does I'll get? I'll accept that. What does Shepard name the ancient ship that travels through the gate? The the uh, puddle jumper. Correct. Whew. What is the name of the Wraith gate ship? Wraith gate ship. Oh, no idea. They didn't have one. Yeah, they did. Mm. What Z? What does ZPM stand for? Zero point module. Correct. What in forty eight hours? What did Rodney McKay, who was mortally allergic to? 
Uh, citrus. Correct. Yay. I love nice. it. At the end, he goes, has this got lemon in it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Panics. <laughs> So the wraith, uh, the darts are the wraith ships. Can oh, they, the ones that stupid name! They kind of darted through. Do they say that in this episode? Though? Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah. okay, good. Yeah, yeah, that that name does ring a bell. Now. Okay, okay, so um, I, I thought it was a trick question. When Reese goes, they didn't have one, uh, didn't have a name. I'm like, he's right. He's, he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I would have got. Uh, Next to none of those, to be honest. Mm. With you, so. So, um, it's the experience yeah. of having to go through so this the, every week yeah. for the, <laughs> the last four years. <laughs> yeah. The wraith four abilities, years. Te- 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 telepathy, uh, super strength. I think they've got to be night vision, super agility, regeneration. Mm. They're basically immortal. Life force sucking and nunchuck skills. <laughs> what is the shit that they make you Boat see? hunting. <laughs> Shadows. <laughs> yeah, that's the telepathy. They're a bit, um, they're telepathy, a, they're right. a bit Dracula-like too. Like they can put you under their thrall and they're like, kneel, mm, kneel, yeah. kneel, Charm you. What is it in True Blood? Mm. Never seen it. Don't know. They do some Mind like rape. Mm. Yeah, that's it. And uh, just a little quick one to finish off. Uh, this is uh, a little special one for Brendan. I'm actually surprised this show actually got off the ground with the way Robert Cooper sells it to people. Okay, Atlantis. It started with, uh, obviously, the movie Stargate. There was a ring, took you to other places. Um, there was the show, Stargate SG-1. Oh, yeah, tell us what else. There was a ring, took you to other places. And now there's Atlantis. And uh, there's a ring, and it takes you to other places. Oh, my God, are you bored of Thanks, your own job? <laughs> I mean, if you didn't know anything about Stargate, that's pretty much the yeah. gist. Jesus a Christ. ring, like a little ring you put on your finger? Who Imagine was that? that? That was Robert C. Cooper. Jesus. Imagine that. Like, people... He's crushing it, mate. <laughs> people that don't know what Stargate is and they tell them to do a Stargate podcast, they're like, oh, what's Stargate about? Imagine if yeah. I did that. It's a ring. Uh, it's a ring. It takes you places. They'd be like, stop right there. I'm just going to go uh, a... jump out of this train. <laughs> there's a, there's a spin-off and there's a ring and it sends you to other places. Hell, mate. Like, this is episode one, mate. Dig up, like sell it. Yeah. Buy your own products, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Oh, well. That's okay. Um, I'm moving gonna go, forward, I'm gonna piss my pants. Moving forward yeah. in Atlantis, <laughs> I have my own version of Cooper, which is Martin Giro. I'll just wait. Okay, you just wait. <laughs> All right. Well, we will be back next week to talk more Stargate, but we're back to Stargate SG One Season Eight, Episode Three. We are talking Lockdown for Episode One Hundred and Fifty Six of Get Into Gates. In the meantime, check out all of our old podcasts. If you're an Atlantis fan who's just jumped on board and you're a fan of us now, not from our SG1 days, jump right on at uh, Get Into Gate, a Stargate podcast, your favourite podcasting outlet, uh, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Just search Get Into Gate, a Stargate podcast or drop us a long form line and send us an off-world activation, getintogate at gmail.com. Come. Yeah, or send us in some stuff for Mitch. Send us in some Mitch trivia. What are we going to do for Mitch in uh, in Atlantis? Yeah, just uh, say that in the subject so I don't read it. <laughs> and I won't because I can't be bothered. So just uh, say it and give uh, give Brandon some fodder for some uh, for some questions and take the pressure off Reese. Yeah, he appreciates that. Give the poor guy, break. Get into geek.